Hallelujah to the Lord God. Jesus, we say thank you for another night of prayer. We say thank you for this week as we spent the week in prayer, seeking your face as we looked at the Matthew chapter 14 prayer series. Jesus, we say thank you because of the revelation of your word and the inspiration, because of the powerful things you're doing in our lives. You're drawing us to a place of boldness, a place where we can dare great things for you. Jesus, we say thank you for the successive visitation and the transformation you're bringing about in our lives. Jesus, we worship you. We honor you, O God. We give you glory. Be exalted for forever and ever in the name of jesus jesus we appreciate you we worship you we worship you thank you father thank you son thank you holy spirit we thank you for the lives that are changed across the world we thank you for people who are blessed even across the ocean jesus we worship you for what you're doing we thank you for the power of your word we thank you for the instrumentality of your spirit we thank you for the chains you breaking in the lives of people jesus we appreciate you be exalted O god forever in the name of jesus be exalted O god forever in the name of jesus we give you glory dear father we give you glory dear son blessed be your name blessed be your name what a week in your presence as we looked at the matthew chapter 4 14 prayer series we a week of seeking your face and praying. We know that this time spent in your presence will not be in vain. We know that this time spent in your presence will yield positive results in our life. We know that our lives will be changed and our destinies will be changed. And for that we say thank you. Father, we've come before your throne again to pray. You say men ought always to pray and not to faint. We're not fainting in the spirit. We're not fainting in the physical. We're standing before your throne to pray. We pray that the heavens will be opened over every one of us and our request will receive instant answers in the name of Jesus Christ. Instant answers to our request in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lord God. I decree this meeting opened in the name of the Father, in that of the Son, and that of the Holy Spirit spirit and i pray that your life will be changed in the name of jesus christ hallelujah to the lord god what a joy to be in the presence of god we started this series on monday and we've looked at some very powerful meetings we started with the other side the other side prophetic journeys how jesus constrained the disciples to get into the boat to get into the ship and go over to the other side the other side of your breakthrough the other side of destiny the other side of manifestation and that is the end goal that is what we started the series with and that's what we're going to end with that we must get to the other side that in these two weeks of intense prayer one week is gone already that by the end of the second week you can boldly say i have got to the other side i have got to the other side in terms of understanding i have got to the other side in terms of the revelatory knowledge of the blueprint of god for my life that this series will not pass by without you receiving the blueprint of heaven without you receiving divine instructions divine instructions that will take you to the next realm divine instructions that you can begin to act upon can i quickly tell you something you need to wage war to be able to get the divine blueprint see there are certain things in your life that will be easy once you have the blueprint the blueprint tells you when you get to this level this is the next decision when you get to this level this is the next decision when you get to this junction take right take left it will save you a ton of time and deliver you from delay seeking for direction at every junction when you already have the blueprint
So the adversary is waging war in the lives of people to hinder them from having the blueprint. So someone comes to seek your hand in marriage, but if you already have the blueprint before he comes, you already know that this one is not the one. So there is no need to waste time going to go to say, is it him? Is it not him? Some people might want to argue and say, no, that's not the case, but I tell you that's the case. That is the case. When Balak sent the princes to Balaam to come and seek for his, um, uh, his prophetic power to be able to curse the children of Israel. The Bible says God came to him in the night and asked him, he says, who are those people with you? He said, they are from Balak and they have, they have, they have come to hire me to curse God's people. And God told him instantly, you will not go with them. You will not cause those people because they are blessed. That is a blueprint that has been given unto him. That anybody that calls you to come and curse the Israelite, anybody that calls you to come and lay evil against God's elect, there is a blueprint that you have already received. A blueprint you have already received and you know that this one is an instant no. There is no need to go back to God and say, yes, I just came to seek for your will again. You already know the will of God. So there are certain jobs that you cannot do because it does not fit into the plan and the purposes of God for your life. I have found this in my life and it has helped me a lot. If I share with you a particular um, experience I had, very powerful experience, very powerful experience, is, is, is a key thing. You must know the divine blueprints. When I graduated from college, I was praying to God to get a job. And based on my medical background, once you graduate from college, you're supposed to do like a one-year internship service. But I had a friend who was already working so some people are able to get a job before that one year service and i pleaded with this my friend i said that company where you're working do they need my services i am available to offer my service you are close to the boss can you put in a word can i make my application can i come for interview and there and then, as I was talking to him, not long after that, I had a vision. And in the vision, I saw myself standing in a narrow place. And I had the words, and I saw the inscription, written, clear as daylight, confinement. So I saw myself standing in a narrow place. I had the words in my ear and I saw the inscription with my eyes. Confinement. And as soon as I got up from that vision, the Lord told me clearly, if you pick up that job, you have entered into confinement. I was sad because I needed money. I just graduated and you want to get a job you need money to do things in your life but i understood that god is giving me a blueprint that if you take up that job you're going to be confined i paid the price for obedience by turning down and not proceeding with that discussion i said don't worry i'm not going again 
He said, are you no longer interested? He said, don't worry. For the next six months, and you thought that God, as a result of that vision, will give me another job. No, he didn't. Rather, the word of God came to me again. He said, when you wake up in the morning, I need you to go to the nearby local church to go and pray. That's all my request from you. How can you tell a fresh graduate that? These are mysteries in the spirit. So when I got up in the morning, you saw me go out, but I was not going to work. I was going to the church to pray four or five hours in the place of prayer, and I will come back in the afternoon. He said, you say you're welcome. I said, thank you. But I didn't go to work. Little did I know that those were the training season where God was brooding and building stature and delivering unto me mysteries in the kingdom. So when you have the divine blueprint, when someone comes to you and say, can, can we get into this business? All you just need to do is check the blueprint and you can tell the person instantly, yes or no. Can we become lovers? Go and check the blueprint. Pay the price to have the blueprint. It will save you a lot of stress. I tell you the truth. I have seen couples get married with so many red flags. I have been privileged to counsel some of them. I said to a friend, I said, this is a red flag. This is a red flag. This is a red flag. Whatever thing you need to do, do it now. Alas, he thought he was smart. He tied the knot and the problems began to unfold. When you have the blueprint for your life, the other side, the other side, what you will be on the other side, what you will achieve on the other side, there are parts you will not even waste your time going into. So that's why we started the meeting on Monday, looking at the mystery of the other side, prophetic journeys. Can I pray over your life that by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, the Lord will deliver into your hands the blueprint you so much need. The blueprint that will save you from confusion. The blueprint that will save you from shame. The blueprint that will save you from delay. The blueprint that will save you from regret. The blueprint that will save you from failure. In the name of Jesus. This is a powerful mystery. At some point in our meetings, I will be coming back to this vision to expound unto you why it's so important to have the divine blueprint for your life. On Tuesday, we looked at solitude, alone in the mountain, the mystery of the mountain and the power it holds for your deliverance, the mystery of the mountain and being alone for, for breakthrough. On Wednesday, we looked at the travails on the ocean, the contrary wind, the boisterous wind, the great storm of wind, and the mighty tempest. All of these we were able to look at on Wednesday. And yesterday, we looked at the fourth watch, miraculous sightings. Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea, in the fourth watch of the night. We began to look at the mysteries that happen in the night. The mysteries that happen in the night. Oh my God. Powerful things the Lord was revealing unto us. If you have not yet listened to these meetings, I implore you to do so. Your life will be forever changed. 
Tonight we're looking at Matthew chapter 14. I just start from verse 22 and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side. And while he sent and while he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was gone, he was there alone. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. Verse 25 And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. We looked at this yesterday, the fourth watch of the night. The miraculous sightings. We will still be looking at this verse. There is something the Lord wants to do in this, through this verse in your life tonight. I thank to tonight's meeting. Spiritual travel. Spiritual travel. The need for speed. Spiritual travel. The need for speed. I pray over your life that the Spirit of God will brood over these words. The Spirit of God will empower your soul and your spirit and your body. And you will journey fast in the Spirit. You will journey fast in the physical in the name of Jesus Christ. Spiritual travel. The need for speed. Verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them. The emphasis for tonight is walking on the sea. Walking on the sea. Spiritual travel. The need for speed. Let me back up a little bit. Jesus has sent the disciples to go to the other side. He was not in a hurry to go with them. So these were people who has gone ahead. These were people who have journeyed before Jesus. Can I quickly tell you right now, it does not matter who has gone ahead of you. It does not matter those that you were classmate together and then you look at their lives and you look at yours and all you can say is that these ones are way ahead of me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. The disciples has gone ahead of Jesus. In fact, it was as if Jesus was stagnant or Jesus was retrogressing because he went into a mountain and spent hours in the place of prayer. So when you spend time in the place of prayer, some people take a look at your life and call you stagnant and call you backward. Don't mind them. They will soon learn the mystery of spiritual travel. They take a look at your life and say, why are you not married, Jesus woman? Why are you not married, Jesus man? We that we have gone, we have got married, we have given back to children. Be patient. You say, what, what job are you doing? You say, I'm still believing God for a job. And they laugh you to scorn. They will soon learn the mystery of spiritual travel. I am telling you what has literally happened to me.
so it does not matter if they've all been employed they all had jobs good jobs good paying jobs and you dead jobless one year two years three years still waiting for a job lord when are you going to do this for me and he tells you just remain in the mountain and pray they had gone ahead and they even had a ship to make the journey easier to make the journey faster they had a ship so you look at your your mates see it's, it's not just got a job it's got a good car it's got this it's got that the things of this life are all available and you, 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 you're not even able to look at their social media pages because each time you take a look, you're almost depressed. Why is my life sour? Why is my own life like this? Be patient. The Lord has a word for you tonight. A word of hope and consolation. The Lord has you in mind. He says, I have engraven you on the palms of my hand can a woman forget a suckling child that she should not give suck unto this to the child of a womb you see ye they may forget yet will i not forget you god has not forgotten you beloved god has not forgotten you so jesus was in the mountain praying Alas, those who have gone ahead, they encounter the difficulty that made their journey to be messed up. Huh. Those who have gone ahead encounter the storm that they were just being tossed to and fro in the midst of the ocean those who have journeyed ahead with the sheep and had all the comfort could not get to the other side then comes the one who has been redundant the one who has been stagnant the one who was supposedly backward who has been in the mountain praying who has been in the mountain seeking the face of god then comes that one and still catches up with those who have gone ahead. Are you seeing something here? Jesus was walking on the water. And some people have gone ahead in the boat, in the ship. Ordinarily, they should get to the other side before Christ. Alas, a stone came along the way that messed up their journey and the one who has spent time in the place of prayer still catches up with them what a great mystery what a great mystery jesus came unto them walking on the water huh. i saw something in another passage that really stirred me up let's look at the same account in the book of mark it mentions something very very slightly different that is powerful mark chapter 6 so is this same encounter jesus walking on the water jesus walking on the sea mark chapter 6 verse 47 and when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he was alone on land. So he had not even started his journey at all. But the ship has gone, and I was already midway. Midway to get into the destination. Look at verse 48. 
and he saw them toiling in ruin. The journey became difficult. The journey became difficult. They began to toil. They began to toil. So it does not matter those who have gone ahead of you. You find that you are still on land. You have not even started your journey at all. Sometimes you are sad. Sometimes you are depressed. No, no. If you are in the mountain to pray, don't run out of the mountain. Finish your prayer. The Lord will soon teach you this, the mystery of spiritual travel. In verse 48, And he saw them toiling in ruin, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them. So they have gone in the evening. And the evening, let's say they went in the first watch. The first watch to the fourth watch is nine hours. As we looked at in the meeting yesterday, they have journeyed nine hours before Jesus. And Jesus still came and met them. That is the spiritual travel I'm talking about. He cometh unto them in the fourth watch, walking upon the sea. Look at the next line. That's where I'm going. And would have passed by them. So, if not that he stopped to intervene in their situation, he would have passed by them and left them alone. Oh my God. When I saw this, my spirit was fired up. Who told you that the only means of journey has to be by sheep on the water? Who told you that if you don't get a job, you cannot get married? Who told you that this is the only mystery that can supply your need? Let me, let me make you understand tonight that you don't always have to need a ship to journey on the water. You can walk on the water. And it does not matter those who have gone ahead of you. You can catch up with them and you can even pass by them. The Bible says Jesus would have passed by them. Jesus walking on the water in the fourth watch of the night would have passed by them. That is the spiritual travel. That it does not matter when you embark on your journey. When God releases you, it does not matter when you conceive. It does not matter when you finally get married. There is a mystery of spiritual travel that you can catch up with those who have gone nine hours ahead. You can catch up with those who have gone nine months ahead. You can catch up with those who have gone nine years ahead. You can catch up with those who have gone a generation ahead and you can even go past them that is the mystery of the meeting of tonight the need for speed spiritual travel it is time for me to journey in the spirit oh god it is time for me to travel by the help of god it is time for me to journey oh god I will not be in that by the scarcity of sheep. I can walk on the water. I will not confine my miracle to come through a job. You can use any means, oh God, to supply my need. Hmm. You can use any means to supply my need. You can use any means to supply my need, oh God. You can use any route for my deliverance. Lord, it is time for me to travel. It is time for me to journey. It is time for me to journey. I receive the help of the Spirit. I receive divine empowerment to journey in the Spirit, to journey to the other side. 
need to journey to the other side of destiny to journey to the other side of breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ so you find someone in your life who has told you if I don't help you nobody can help you tell them it is a lie they've told you if my sheep does not carry you this is the last ship that is sailing tonight if you don't make this boat forget about the other side make them know that there is a mystery of walking on the water and when I walk on the water even you that you have taken ship I will meet you and I will pass by you oh my god that's a mighty revelation for your soul that's a mighty deliverance for your spirit that even those who have taken ship and it seems as if they've gone ahead of you even those who have embarked on the journey and it seems as if these ones are more prosperous when the Lord lets you off from the mountain of prayer when you rise up from the midnight travel you step into a higher realm with God you step into a higher realm of supply you step into a higher realm of breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ spiritual travel it is time for you to join him it is time for you to join him I release upon your life the grace to travel the grace to join him receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus spiritual travel spiritual travel the need for speed the need for speed in your life the need for speed in your destiny the need for speed in your career the need for speed in your family it is time for you to step into that realm with God it is time for you to step into that realm of 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 quick results in the name of Jesus Christ hmm. The old woman came to the prophets. Hmm. She came to the prophets and says, Man of God, I have two sons. My husband was a prophet and he died. Hmm. And now he was hoeing some money. And the creditor has come to take my two children. Can I decree over your life? The creditor will not take that which is there unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The creditor will not take away that which is there unto you. The creditor wanted to go to take her two children. And the woman cried unto the prophet and says, What shall I do? The prophet asked her, He said, What do you have in your house? We're still looking at the mystery of spiritual travel. She said, I don't have anything except a bottle of oil and the prophet said don't you dare say that anymore you have the anointing you have the oil in your house and all and you're telling me you don't have nothing no way go and borrow vessels not a few go and borrow vessels not a few shut the door upon yourself and upon your sons and begin to pour from that bottle so from that little you have the lord can multiply it just like he multiplied the five loaves and the two fishes i'm telling you this because i want you to know i don't care those who have been walking around you they've been in the market they are earning a salary and you were just on the verge of losing your children 
as a result of death. But by one stroke of intervention, you can journey from being in debt to a realm of abundance where you become a marketer of oil and you, 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 you automatically richer than those who have been working and were never in debt. That is the mystery of spiritual journey. From the point of death, you went to the point where you're selling oil that you can live on for the rest of your life. Can you imagine that quantity of oil? She kept pouring into the vessel, pouring into the vessel. I can only imagine how much, how many drums she had. Borrowed vessels, borrowed vessels, not a few. That is the mystery of travel. So from five loaves and two fishes. If there were people who had one basket and they were laughing at the small boy, he said, you just have five loaves and two fishes. The boy would have said to them, hold on a bit. There is an intervention that will come into my life that will translate these five loaves and two fishes into 12 baskets. Hmm, what a deep mystery. From five loaves and two fishes in one night, I'm going to journey to having 12 baskets. 12 baskets that can feed more people. So don't you be despaired or dismayed by those who have gone ahead of you. Even if there is no boat, there is no ship, he said the scholarship has closed, the job opportunity has ended, this and that has happened. Apologies. Unfortunately, don't you dare write off yourself. Don't you write off the miracle. Don't you write off God. Who told you that it will be by that job that your deliverance will come? Who told you that it will be by that thing that was set your mind upon? Be open with the Spirit of God. You can walk on the water and you will overtake those who have gone on the ship. Can you cry this over your life? Lord, it is time for me to journey. Whatever way you want to do it, oh God, I don't care. Whatever way you want to take me oh God I don't care all I care is that it is time to journey and I must journey in the spirit I must journey in the physical I receive speed to overtake those who have gone I receive speed to overtake the mockers I receive speed to overtake the scoffers I receive speed to overtake those who have gone ahead of me in the name of Jesus Christ I receive speed I receive speed I receive speed in the name of Jesus Lord I'm not going to box you into a corner that if you don't do it this way then nothing else can happen the Bible says the cattle on a thousand hills are mine God can route your deliverance through any means you don't have to limit God that this will be the only way of your deliverance. Even if there is no sheep, you can walk on the water. Even if there is no boat, you can walk on the water. Even if there is no bridge, you can walk on the water. All I care about is that that deliverance comes and it comes to your life in record time. I pray over your life in the name of Jesus. Let the hand of the Lord move you forward. Let the hand of the Lord move you forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the hand of the Lord move you forward. Let the power of God move you forward. Let the power of God move you forward. Let the might of the Spirit move you forward. In the name of Jesus, 
journey journey in the spirit journey to your deliverance journey to your breakthrough receive speed in the spirit receive speed in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ receive speed in the spirit receive speed in the spirit at arrive at your destination in the name of Jesus so Jesus would have passed by them Jesus would have passed by them <laughs> they have gone nine hours ahead but Jesus caught up with them and would have gone past them so it does not matter those who have gone ahead of you <laughs> you can catch up receive grace to catch up in the name of Jesus that's your deliverance receive the power to catch up in the name of Jesus let the Lord God cause a shift in the atmosphere around you let the Lord God cause a shift in the climate around your life let speed come into your soul let speed come into your feet let the chains of stagnation be broken let the chains of retrogression be broken receive speed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ receive speed in your life receive speed in your life in the name of Jesus Christ Christ. receive speed in your life in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray how can I not read this first Kings chapter 18 first Kings chapter 18 verse 45 and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode in his chariots and went unto Jezreel. In verse 44, the final part, he says, And he said, Go up and see unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot. And get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. So as soon as the heavens were black with clouds, he had got on his chariot. This has been the problem with many Christians. They haven't got no chariot. <laughs> and they look at other people. You're a female. You trust in God. To route your deliverance the God way. And you have friends who can flaunt their bodies and don't care about those here the Lord. A politician has come for them. They're married. They're not even riding cars now. They've got chariots. See, whoa, this person is now a celebrity. We were in the same room on campus. These were the movers and the shakers. They went to every club, to every party. They painted the campus red. Now they're moving in not just cars, but chariots. And I'm here. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The end goal is Jezreel. Don't you bother about what you're seeing now. The end goal is who gets to Jezreel first. By the way, you are in no competition with them. But when Jesus constrained his disciples, he says, go over onto the other side. The end goal was not the midst of the ocean. The end goal was the other side. So even if they have journeyed nine hours ahead, if they never got to the other side, it's useless. There are people who don't care about the other side. Just let me do it like that. He said, but this person you want to get married is already assaulting you before the marriage. He said, I don't care. I just want to get married. I am tired of being a, a single fellow. And they get married. Ha. 
but they never get to the other side. The married heads for the rocks and they're back to being single. Now single mothers. They've gone, they've got children to cater for with pain, with hatred, with defeat, with hunger. They've got a lot of baggages. There is still deliverance for such people tonight because you have to get to the other side. You have to get to the other side. So Ahab rode in his chariot and look at verse 46. Alas, the time now is 46 minutes past 12. Look at verse 46. This is your deliverance. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. By reason of this hour, this time synchronizing with this verse, I decree upon your life right now, let the hand of the Lord come upon you. Let the hand of the Lord come upon your spirit. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he guarded up his loins and ran before him to the entrance of Jezreel, received the unction to run ahead of those in their chariots, received the power to run ahead of those in their chariots, received the, un the unction, the anointing to run ahead of those who are mocking you, received the anointing to run ahead of those who have ridiculed your Jesus, who have ridiculed your patience, who have ridiculed your stance with God, who have ridiculed your consecration, receive the unction, receive the anointing to run ahead of those in their chariots, to run ahead of those in their chariots, receive that anointing in the name of Jesus Christ, receive that anointing in the name of Jesus, receive that anointing in the name of of Jesus, I decree upon your life speed for travel, speed for travel. Don't you worry if there is no ship, don't you worry if that job didn't work out, don't you worry if what you're expecting didn't quite happen just as you expect. The Lord can make you to walk on the water, and even those who have gone in the ship, you will meet with them and you will even go past them in the name of Jesus. This is your deliverance. Just as Jesus walked on the water, I command over your life, begin to walk over the waters of difficulty, over the waters of failure, over the waters of shame and reproach, over the waters of disgrace. Begin to walk over the waters in the name of Jesus. Let the hand of the Lord show up for you. Let the power of the Lord show up for you. Let the might of God's spirit come forth for you in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of stagnation. I break the yoke of retrogression. I break the yoke of, of hindrances in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lord God. Hallelujah to the Lord God. Let the name of the Lord be praised in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the name of the Lord be praised in the name of Jesus. What a powerful meeting. What a powerful meeting. I want you to listen to this meeting as soon as it's uploaded. And pray. 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 And pray again. That is your deliverance. That is your deliverance. And I trust that the Lord will show for you in the name of Jesus Christ.